This is Christian Voice. I'm Stephen Green. Now, why does the irreligious left hate Israel and support jihadism with such a passion? How does their thinking spill over into abortion and the gender wars? So firstly, why is there so much anti-Semitism among those who regard themselves as left liberal and progressive? Well, deep down it's a spiritual question. It's the oldest hatred after all. But how can the godless left ignore the 7th of October atrocities? How can they justify murder and rape? Here's the reason, and I'm indebted to US columnist Dennis Prager for it. In the Revelation to John, we read, They were judged every man according to their works. The anti-Christian left do not think like that. They do not have a moral compass with which to judge works and deeds. Instead, they have firstly a power compass, secondly a race compass, and thirdly a class, wealth or money compass. If just one of those points north in your case, you are privileged. If they all point north, you're an oppressor. If one points south, you're disadvantaged. If they all point south, you are oppressed. There is also a sex compass and a sexuality compass, which we shall come to. In the Israel-Hamas discussion, the first is irrelevant, of course. The second actively ignored. It has to be. And I'll explain why later. Right then, take the power compass first. In the early days, Israel was small, at the mercy of its Arab neighbours. It was good and fashionable on the left, especially the kibbutz system. However, as Israel won wars and became strong, Israel became bad and the Arabs became good on the power compass. Next, on the race compass, Jews are perceived as white and Palestinians as non-white. Of course, it's not strictly true, but it doesn't matter. It only needs to be how the left see it. Now add the money compass. Jews are hard-working. They know the spiritual principles of success. They have grown rich. In contrast, while there are some hard-working Palestinian people, and I have a particular affinity for the traditional soap makers in Nablus or Shechem, graft, corruption, reliance on aid and oppression from the likes of Hamas and Fatah bring general poverty to the areas they oversee. But for the left, that's OK, because all three compasses point north for Israel and Jews, and they all point south for the Holy Land's Arabs. The Jews, the Israelis, Israel, are seen as oppressors, while the Palestinians are the oppressed. You must understand that it does not matter what either side of the Holy Land actually does. You'll find references in the Bible to the oppressed and to oppressors, but Jewish and Christian moral theology concerns itself overwhelmingly with what people do. The Lord God asked Cain, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Our Lord said, For every tree is known by his own fruit. The prophet Haggai can write, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. And Jeremiah will report the Lord saying, They should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. But in the irreligious or even pro-Muslim leftist view, their doings are irrelevant. It doesn't matter how much terror Islamic jihadists engage in against Israel and Jewish people. The deliberate targeting of women and children does not register because, remember, the jihadists are the oppressed and every Jew is an oppressor. Nothing which we might see as morally good, which the members of an oppressor group do, will excuse them. Nothing morally evil done by the oppressed will condemn them. The terrorists are good, no matter how many atrocities they carry out. In contrast, if Israel bomb Hamas installations, the MRLF say they are committing genocide. If the IDF advise people to leave areas used by Hamas for their own safety, they are committing ethnic cleansing. For the left, oppressor Israel, strong, white and rich, could do nothing right. Oppressed Hamas, weak, brown and poor, could do nothing wrong. Nevertheless, the irreligious left and Hamas, for that matter, know that ordinary people have a moral compass. They know you have a moral compass and how it works. So they will use that against you and against those they have categorised as the oppressors. That's why some Islamists try to say Hamas terrorists were being kind to babies and comforting them, or even denying they slaughtered anyone at all. They're trying to appeal to your moral compass. As well as lacking a moral compass, the irreligious left also lack the capacity to think things through and to examine themselves. It would therefore be a mistake to look for logical thinking or self-awareness among them. Instead, there is an unashamed, essential denial of realities. Moving outside the Gaza war, you'll be aware of the hierarchy of victimhood in which the sex and sexuality compasses are added, putting white, heterosexual men famously at the bottom and black lesbians at the top. But it's even more complicated than that. Women are only weak and virtuous until they oppose trans women. That's because transgenders are always weak and oppressed on the sexuality compass. 
even when they are men and obviously stronger and more aggressive than the real women they oppose. The sexuality compass, you see, trumps the sex compass. Remember not to think logically if you're trying to follow this. The Bible might well have said, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. But reason cuts no ice here. Gays and lesbians are an oppressed group. But lesbians are not as oppressed as transgenders, so they may not complain when a man complete with male genitalia demands to be accepted as a trans lesbian. In the hierarchy of victimhood, if one group does not get along with another, that doesn't matter to the left either. As I said earlier, compasses may be ignored if they are inconvenient. That's why you will find gays for Palestine marching alongside people who would throw them off the nearest high building if they ever set foot in the Gaza Strip. Just to wrap up a few loose ends, you might think unborn babies are weak and their mothers are strong, so abortion would be wrong. Not so. There's an anti-Christian, even satanic ideology at stake here. So the left refuse to allow themselves to think of pre-born babies as human beings in the first place. Their obvious weakness as tiny people can never come into consideration. They use Latin words or Latin-derived words like uterus, fetus, termination, instead of simple English wherever they can. George Orwell said, a mass of Latin words falls upon the facts like soft snow, blurring the outlines and covering up all the details. The left use language, not as we do, to explain the truth, but to obscure it. All that remains is to remind ourselves that all is not lost. There is still hope. God assured Elijah, yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Elisha told his servant, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now that might have been the angelic host, but this is after all a spiritual battle. There are more with us than we imagine is the point. The Lord told the Apostle Paul not to be afraid and to speak up for the same reason. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. Let's pray. Confound the workers of iniquity, O Lord, and lift up and encourage your people to proclaim the truth. Give us discernment to see when a moral compass is absent and to confront lies and distortions. Convict them, Lord, we pray, and grant them repentance and salvation. Also, dear Lord, open doors into the hearts of the 7,000 and the many people you still have in the city and bring them alongside us. Above all, show us what we can do and then by your grace do the miraculous that only you can do. Amen. Oh, by the way, don't fall into the same trap yourself of approving everything someone does just because you like them or condemning everything someone does because you don't. The Bible writers never do that. And if you're considering your own doings and realising they fall short on the Lord's moral compass, trust in Jesus to forgive you by the blood he shed on the cross and start again in the power of the Holy Spirit. Click on the transcript link below to go to our website where you can leave your contact details and feel free to post a comment there or here. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, like and share the video and don't forget, to do this work we rely on the Lord's blessing and your prayers and your financial support. Thanks for watching.